All right, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Future Ear Radio podcast. I am thrilled to be joined today by Chris Hewitt and Amy Trussler of Pacific Audiology Group. So, Chris and Amy, thanks for being here. How are you doing today? Good. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, wanted to have you two on, um, talk about sort of the past, the present, and the future of Pacific Audiology Group. Um, it's really cool what you guys are doing, and I just figured this would make for a great chat. So, why don't we start with the past? Um, either one of you can jump right in and just kind of delve into the origin of how Pacific Audiology Group began. I'll oh, let Amy can... uh, talk about the past because she she was here before me. And... Yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Just Go slightly ahead. before Chris. I'm, yeah. I guess, so the origins of Pacific Audiology Group um, really started um, in, I guess, my desire to be involved in education. That was sort of always my um, primary goal in in this field, and I'm um, I found myself in private clinic ownership, um, which was a bit of a conscious choice because I felt like it would be slightly hypocritical of me to enter like education without having any clinical experience. Because I know throughout graduate school myself, like often your instructors are telling you how things um, go and then you would go to your placements and they would say, oh yeah, is that what your you know PhD instructors told you that I've never been in a clinic? And so I'm, that was always very apparent to me and one of my conscious choices to enter the field. Um, but I always had the pull back to education. And so I sold my practice in, I think it was 2019, um, with the goal of entering education within this field. And that was really those conversations with people that I trusted um, was how this all came about. And it was actually uh, a big phone conversation with Dan Passaretti, who was one of my sales reps and had recently retired. Um, and he was sort of a mentor to me. And we had a long chat on the phone about where I should go. And he felt strongly that, um, and so did I, that there was like a big gaping hole in sort of quality education that was really accessible and I'm, you know, not sort of in the university. And so we talked about what areas of audiology were and hearing care were needing education. And we just started with Saruman management and we just said, let's design a Saruman management course. Um, something amazing and that's accessible and just see where this goes. And really that just, that conversation really just started this rolling ball downhill of what's become Pacific audiology. It's just been building and evolving. And somewhere along the line, Chris got involved, so I can let him speak to that. And uh, we've become what we are now. Yeah. So Amy sold her practice in 2019. Amy's an AUD, by the way. Uh, I'm a hearing instrument specialist. I had a private practice also sold it at the end of 2019, right? And as Amy and Dan were starting this suburban management training. And so we started chatting about partnering up and how to grow this and get it online and add more course content. Um, so I left my position and we started working at this really full, full time in early 2021 and rebranded specific audiology group, something we recently got some feedback on that. You should change your name again because it's not entirely clear that it's a training organization. It sounds like a group of hearing clinics. So we we spent all this time and effort on the brand, and we love people love the brand and the website. And um, who knows, we might have to rebrand at some point. But yeah, we've just been going full speed with uh, online video based continuing ed that isn't so much you know sort of product focused or information dumps. Um, so we're trying to, we're trying to meet the needs of hearing care providers. It was initially a lot here in Canada. Um, we have some good traction in Australia and now in the U S as well with that course being AAA and IHS approved. Awesome. So, um, well, thanks for being here today. I'm, I'm excited to dive into all this. Um, so going back to what you said, Amy, you know, kind of like you, you, I identified there being this big hole. Um, in the market around education, can you speak more to that? What what, what exactly was in your eyes lacking? Um, when did this crystallize in your mind that you wanted to move out of private practice audiology, sold your clinic, and it sounds like this was sort of premeditated that you already had 
identified kind of what your next step was going to be. Can you walk us through what that period was like in terms of what was going through your head and what felt like the opportunity to you? Yeah, yeah, that was a really interesting period of my life. Um, I always envisioned myself ending up working like at a university, you know, in a in an AUD program, teaching and doing research. Um, it had been a really hard decision for me to turn down a PhD offer after my master's. Um, and again, I felt strongly that I needed clinical experience. Um, and so I followed that, which brought me through, you know, clinic ownership. And within that, I realized that like, it's really easy to find amazing education when you're like, immersed within an institution you know like I, I did my grad school in Australia and you're living there and you're you're learning and living and breathing audiology and then you get into the clinic and for me I was in a rural and remote town and I was like quite isolated and accessing um you know specific information was sort of challenging and accessing especially like specialized area of practice like sort of management or tinnitus or vestibular I found it hard to like access that within where I was. And yet it's also extremely challenging to take a long period of time away from a clinic, especially if you own it. Um, and in general, I am very passionate about like accessibility in education. So just this concept that, and I know some, you know, medical schools and institutions are doing this, but the concept that like you don't want to ha have to have this brick and mortar where people come to you that you can bring the education to them. And so that's what sort of started um, all of this was taking a really high quality topic that I personally had really struggled to find training in room and management and creating a course that like anyone could take from anywhere. And then as, as we saw some success in that, and I was extremely happy because I was doing what I love doing, which is teaching and creating content the conversation started to be, how can we do this in other areas? And people started to approach us and say, well, there's these other areas where this is needed. And so, you know, another huge area that I, I really struggled with in clinic was infection control. And so I dove right into that next. And then I'm, shout out I to had you. a, pardon? Big shout out to AU. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> huge shout out to AU. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and ear impressions because, um, I had support staff and audiology assistant and that like, that like changed my ability to scale and grow at the clinic was being able to outsource to an audiology assistant. And, um, a lot of clinicians were asking me, well, how did you train her? And I had designed my own training program for her. And then, so getting that online with her, she became a course contributor, um, in that. And so, all of a sudden, it just felt like I was able to do to get these trainings uh, and this education out to people that they could take from anywhere. And so that's what I mean when I say like things weren't as accessible, like not everyone can always go to a conference. And even if you can go to a conference, they might not be teaching that topic. Um, or, and also just being able to access courses on your own time, like even if it's an hour a day when you're in the mode to learn being able to pause and rewind and zoom in. Cameras have these abilities now that we're not taking as much advantage of, especially in audiology, like fields far more complex than audiology. And I don't want to say far more complex, but I kind of do like people are doing remote stuff um, in all kinds of fields that we're not quite doing yet. And we can. And I want to be a part of that, a part of someone in uh, a remote community saying, I want education in this. And we're like, well, we can bring that to you. And not only can we bring that to you, we can bring it to you in a really high quality, immersive way on your schedule. And then that levels up everyone. So I can go on forever about this. I probably need to stop talking on this I right know, now, but okay. like, I'm quite passionate about it. <laughs> this is what happens. This is what happens. <laughs> what happens. So, so, um, no, and, and we'll get into kind of like exactly the kind of content because it is, when you say it's high quality, I think that's like what really stands out when you when you see it for the first time is that it's very, very professionally done. Um, but I want to stick on this theme of like making these uh, topics and, and basically like these procedures within the clinic more widely accessible. Um, so for you, Chris, like when did you kind of enter into the fold here and, and what, what got you really excited about what Amy was developing? Just kind of give me a sense of, um, how this whole relationship came to be and, and where your head was at when you kind of saw the vision here and, and what got you excited. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so I was Amy's Oticon sales rep for a few years. So we knew each other that through that relationship. And so that's how she, she came to me when she was trying to grow this. Her and Dan had this sort of a management program. Dan's looking to scale down, not scale up in his career um, or slow down. He was, he had just retired and this was kind of starting to grow and she needed a hand with it. So she reached out to me knowing that, you know, I've got some industry connections and some, you know, experience in training, a lot of training, a lot of sales, uh, before I had my private practice. And so there was kind of a natural partnership. Actually, Amy and I knew each other, like the, my clinical job before I left to go work in wholesale, I, I quit that position. And then Amy kind of filled it the next week, just showed up out of her master's program, um, 10, 12 years ago. So we've known each other since she's kind of been back in Canada for a long time. And so it was a good fit. I have, you know, sort of business development experience and she's really good at sort of driving this thing forward and generating more learning content. Um, so together, you know, just kind of made sense to give this a try. And it's been, uh, it's been quite a ride <laughs> the last couple <laughs> of years. So very different than, you know, it's an unpredictable business for us, right? It's not, it's not a private practice hearing clinic, which most of us are, that's where we work or you work in wholesale as a sales rep or a trainer. It's something new and it's something different. Um, I had listened to your episode with, um, with Nicole and Joe from, mm -hmm. Academy. And it's so funny that that, that story sounded so familiar, except their, their husband and wife, but, um, starting with one, one topic, like how to get front office staff better trained mm -hmm. and, and then kind of going from there. Um, so yeah, it's working really well and we have a good sort of synergy in, in terms of like what I'm doing and what she's doing. I mean, Amy, you said you can talk about this for hours, you know, when it, going back to that episode with, uh, with Joe and Nicole, um, the thing that really stood out and it's, you know, I think we talked about this on that episode, which is, it's part of a broader theme, which is kind of like one of the things that really gets me excited about what's happening right now in audiology is a sense of, uh, of like camaraderie and collaborativeness, um, amongst the profession that I, I haven't been is involved in this space um, as long as maybe you two have, but it just seems like this is kind of a new trend that's happening where you have a lot of the, it's almost as if the audiologists are kind of taking the onus upon themselves to say like the best way for us to sort of upskill ourselves collectively is to work together and <laughs> kind of like nurture that um, and foster that amongst ourselves. So, it, you know, Chris, like that was, I was thinking of the same thing. And I'm just curious to kind of get your sense, like when you started to produce the content, you started to develop your training courses, like when, uh, what were those first few experiences like where you felt as if this was um, paying off and that like people were seeing the value in this? I'm sure that was probably pretty gratifying and um, validating of like, we're onto something here. Yeah. I mean, it's, ex I mean, when. We, we've set up like we have a website and an online store and a learning management software. So for a long time, it was just because Amy's been to become the IT uh, yeah. group. So we DIY and this whole thing. And so to actually have it come together and have someone go and, you know, add a course to their cart and purchase it. And then you can get notified on your watch through Shopify. Uh, so the first time that started to sort of gel and come together, um, yeah, it's a very good feeling. And, um, we still do some of like the in-person stuff as well and seminar training, but to see the online thing actually start to take shape yeah. and what's coming next with that is, um, yeah, I guess it mean it happened with the Serum and Management Program. It happened pretty early. Once I came on, we put the website together, the new brand, the story already had the learning management thing going. Um, so it all, happened. it was, it was recorded slideshow for a lot of it at first. And that was a huge shift for us is when we were able to take it to all really high quality, like the premium courses are all basically 4k video with like incredible zoom in. Um, they're filmed on like the same camera that the hobbits filmed on. Like it's, <laughs> it's simple. you know, it's, it's great. And then, uh, you know, our, our new product, which, um, we'll talk about is 
you know, still extremely high quality video filming. And I think for me, it's it's like every time that someone's like impressed with it, like I'm still like, I don't know, like I'm a little bit shocked and not in a way that they shouldn't be impressed with it. They should. I've worked really hard, but just in this way that like I've been pushing forward so hard and then someone comes in and is like, it's amazing what you guys are doing. I love the brand. I love the interface. It has value. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, really? It's working? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so genuinely like excited at it. Um, and to speak to that, you know, collaborativeness, like I've always felt when I entered this field um, that, you know, there's so many people with hearing loss, like we're, we're tapping a very tiny portion of the market as a, as a field. And, and it, it can be a very competitive field field right um and i think that there is more than enough business to go around to all of us and what i am really interested in being a part of is a leveling up of all professionals um and i'm not just talking about auds and audiologists here like i'm also talking about um all hearing care professionals like hearing instrument practitioners i'm or what are, is that? Am I saying the right thing for hearing hearing, hearing instrument, instrument specialist. specialists? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's just very it's very important because that it's everyone who touches anyone, uh, admin staff, audiometric technicians, anyone who touches anyone who has a hearing loss, like, is incredibly important part of the system, and, and that's the community. And so, you know, that was another reason that I was really wanting to work with Chris because he has the perspective of a hearing instrument specialist and I have the perspective of an audiologist and, you know, Jocelyn, who's done a course with us, she has the perspective of a front desk staff. And it's just all of us together are what encourage people to feel, you know, safe and able to treat their hearing loss and re-engage with their, you know, hearing health. And so, Pacific Audiology Group really is aimed to like level up and to create community. And the creating community part um, is also something that's going to is coming through in our next product that we should probably just talk about right now. And there's like a there's a community aspect to um, that product. That's a private community where people can get industry updates and can chat and um, can help each other out. And the idea is if we all level up, then everyone's going to be, you know, more successful. And also like more happy like it, it feels good to feel like you're a part of something and and we're all becoming more successful together totally i mean so like i'm curious why did you start with serum and removal um what was the rest dan <laughs> that was all that conversation with dan it was um you know, just this really honest conversation i still so remember it uh like upstairs in my living room on the phone with him, like I've sold my practice. I want to get back into education. Do I put in an application to a university? I'm. Um, do I? What do I do? Like, and and then just chatting about what I really wanted to do, which was uh, work with professionals in a way that sort of helped them to level up. And he just said, Amy, in all my years as a sales rep, everyone asked me about room and management. Like, just start there just design a course and see what happens like start tomorrow morning and so we spent that whole summer dan and i every morning on zoom designing this course and it took us to this is the quickest course we designed because we had all day every day um and uh we designed this stream and management program and it i really believe it's the most comprehensive one in the world it's we just went down every rabbit hole um and uh got it out there and and that's yeah so that's how it started and i think and, i'll just add that yeah where we live and practice you know we're in that vancouver area it's uh there there hasn't been any you know it's, it's difficult to get you need a certification here to practice servant management even as an aud um you need to be supervised like it's quite it's quite a challenge and so there's a huge need to be offering that service and physicians are no longer really wanting to do it as much or able to bill for it. And so it all kind of fell in the laps of hearing care professionals, but they weren't able to do it because of um, certification issues. So that was, I think, part of why Dan's hearing about it so much, uh, just like we still are. So it's different than in the US where, you know, you should have some training and you generally don't get it in a lot of programs. I know the AUD programs now, a lot of them are offering it, yeah. but um here it was like this advanced certification that you require that you do not need in a lot of places. Yeah. 
Well, the other thing too with it that um, like take serum and removal, for example, is that it's highly variable based upon like the, the method that you will probably default to as a provider is highly variable based upon what you were trained upon. And so, you know, if there's kind of like more or less three methods, mechanical suction and um, irrigation, uh, you know, your, te- your preference is largely, and I mean, this is obviously kind of consistent with a lot of things in audiology, which is like what you were trained on, what you were exposed to. <laughs> so I think it's neat, like, because even if, even if you feel comfortable with, um, you know, that one method that you maybe have gotten and not trying to generalize, I'm sure there's some audiologists out there that know how to perform serum removal in a variety of different yeah. ways. But the point is, is that I think that like, it speaks to um, part of the opportunity, which is that, you know, there are, there's education opportunities for people that already have an existing knowledge of this because there's all of the nuance that goes along with the different methodology and the different procedures and all that. So I think it's like, it, it makes a lot of sense to me that you can cater this both to somebody that is maybe, um, a, you know, kind of a rookie, like brand new to it, as well as folks that maybe are only familiar with one style of that particular mm-hmm. thing. Totally. That's, uh, I mean, we, we really sort of preach this, that you should be very comfortable with at least two methods and hopefully all three, but also up to date with all the tech, right? Like if you're, if you're just using a stainless steel syringe on everyone, <laughs> um, that's, that's really not good enough. And, and regarding the three different methods, it's so funny that we hear, I mean, the, the bias and I guess just, you know, this might be dramatic, but like indoctrination, whatever happens culturally in an area, because we're selling this all over the world now, mm-hmm. you get, we teach on everything and we have people in the U.S. saying, you know, this is a great course. Um, I wish you'd spend more time with irrigation <laughs> demos. Right. And then the next day, someone emails from Australia saying, why are you still teaching irrigation? It's from the yeah. Stone Ages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's even doing that anymore? And so it's like, it just depends where you are and who you are and, and where you're working. It's uh, everyone has some pretty strong opinions about it uh, and they're all right. Yeah. So it's very interesting having a global perspective, like seeing the different areas just in terms of, you know, who can perform it and on um, and uh, yeah, in different countries, like some countries, like only an ENT can perform serum and removal and in other places, you know, it's in the scope of practice of like, Anyway, we hope you know, physiotherapists totally, or something. Yeah, totally different um, types yeah. of equipment. Like, you know, in yeah. uh, the UK, microsuction is huge, um, which, you know, a lot of the types of microsuction devices, they're not even FDA um, certified. And so they're not available in the US. So it's yeah. very, very variable. And, um, but I think that, like, you know, one of the things that I find to be very interesting about what you all are doing is that you're taking these topics and, catering them to large and very disparate audiences. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of one of those where it's diversified enough to appeal to a large audience, but also I think it it caters to them universally, if that makes sense. Like you've kind of, you know, straddled the fence, if you will. Totally, totally. Yeah, we try to just teach on everything. Like our, our sort of our litmus test is like educate. And that's a neat thing about, you know, teaching professionals at this level is you, you provide all of the information and, you know, and then it, it, it allows them to choose. And you just pr- provide as much evidence based as you can, all the different products, benefits, limitations. Um, but we have the freedom where we're not pushing anything like these premium courses that we have, they're, they're completely independent, you know, and they're, they're a la carte. Um, purchased all the carts. So they're designed to be comprehensive. Um, and we don't, you know, like we've had people ask us, oh, well, can you take out this module? And we're like, no, if it's a part of cerebral management uh, or it's a part of infection control um, or any other courses we're developing, it's, it's in the course. These are comprehensive programs. So you mentioned that the camera you're using is the same that they use to film The Hobbit, which again, yeah. I mentioned at the top that... Um, the quality of your videos are incredible. Like it's unlike anything I've really seen in this industry. And to your point, it's because you're using some really high end equipment. So like, how did that all, how did that portion come to be? And then 
just in terms of what what's it been like with bringing the content to life? Like you've obviously had a clear idea of here's the kinds of content that I want to create, but obviously it's way different to create the content. So what's that yeah. process been like? Yeah. Oh, well, wild ride. Amy, uh, <laughs> I'll let Amy speak to the video. Uh, oh, I, I just the had... Camera. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing's been a very wild ride. Like, we had a, a vision, and this is where I'm so grateful that Chris is my business partner because we're able to put so much energy into trying things and just continuing to try it until we figure out it, it's working um, or we figure out how it works and how much effort that takes is 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 a lot i am so we're really fortunate my in my personal life my husband is a cinematographer so he has a lot of camera gear and so when this all came to life we started to um use his camera gear and use his skills and so our premium courses are all filmed on um a red camera and we have professional lighting and they're filmed in our studio uh, which we have an actual 3D studio that's like a clinic. And the effort that that took between me and my husband to help set up the look, Chris, um, Chris Swift's an interior designer and helped us a bit with the the look of it. And once we, now it's all very straightforward. We We set up our premium course, we go into the studio, we set up the lights and we set up everything and we film it. But to get there was really, I would say, a year of, constant fidgeting yeah. and figuring out and I don't know how many times my husband's name is Jay I don't know how many times he would be up so late trying to just mess with the different lighting and the bounces and we have some behind the scenes um so you can see all of that and now Pacific Audiology we actually own our own camera gear now so we have a few different film kits um so it really depends on what course we're doing because we are we've hinted at this but we're we're launching a micro course platform which is our new product that we're really excited about that I'll let Chris talk about a bit more in a second. But that has a different camera setup because we can't just have everyone, you know, fly here and film in the studio. So we have a kit that is sort of like halfway in between that still has lights and stands and is highly complicated that only Chris and I can set up after a year of bothering right. my husband to teach us how to do it and learn about light. I'm... And uh, then we also have a self-film kit, which is we can mail to somebody and they can film themselves with a, you know, it has a built-in teleprompter and that really anyone with no film experience can do. And it's still really HD quality, but um, for the professional grade courses, it's like a full, yeah, it's a, if anyone knows Red Camera, it's a famous type of film camera and uh, really big lights and a full teleprompter and um it can be there's, a little bit intimidating <laughs> there's a level of nerdiness to this that i had no idea there's film's a big thing here in vancouver and so i'm not from here when you move here you meet all these people who work in film and it's just so weird probably in st louis too you don't meet a lot of people who work in film yeah. but here it's just it's part of the economy and yeah. part of that economy <laughs> he's yeah. like he's pretty uh he's pretty into the gear so the, the funny thing about our, you know, our idea with Learn On, this microcourse platform was the same idea with, um, you know, providing access to this education to anybody, whether you're in Guam or wherever you need, you need some online ed because there's no conferences coming your way. We want to sort of do the same thing for people who want to have something to contribute and something to teach. So we decided to put this mobile film kit together and... You know, you know, put it together, my pelican my, cases. Yeah. So we could ship it to your door and you set it up and you could film yourself teaching your course and we'll host it and sell it and everything. And uh, by the time we were done with it, because Jay got involved, it was like the size of a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 150 pounds and yeah. stands and we can barely set it up. And we're like, well, this isn't good for most people. So we've created this little compact sort of self film IP iPad shotgun mic lighting kit that you can set up. So we've got one we can mail out now and we've got one that Amy and I can can travel with. And then we've got the big fancy stuff that's at her place. Yes, the the coffin size one that Jay helped us build out. Now Chris and I have learned how to set it up. So we actually now know how to set it up. Um but <laughs> we it's we're gonna a build a course like... on how to set it up, which was funny. Yeah. 
Jay always does this thing like once you're sitting there and you're ready to film with his hand and he's like looking at it and being like, oh, the light is in it. And he's like moving his hand back and forth to to test the light. And Chris and I are both looking at him half crooked being like, <laughs> like, like, how, like, what is the difference here? And it always looks great. But it's the thing is, is like to take somebody and key them out of a green screen, you have to have your lighting set up properly. Um, so, yeah, we're learning all this stuff. But um, this is a good segue. Should I should I explain what Learn On is? Yeah, yeah. I started to, but then went into the coffin camera. But we, I'll let <laughs> the you coffin take camera. it from here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I mean, we we have these premium courses that we've talked about, the Hobbit camera courses. Um, that we're really excited about, and those are going to continue to develop and be a la carte. Um, and then we just there's this continuing education need that healthcare professionals have to. Um, keep up to date every year with CEUs and what's relevant and to kind of know what's out there. And we really wanted to address this need, but in a unique way. And so we're using micro courses, which is like, you know, you call it the quick and dirty on a topic, like right to the point. So the max course length in our micro course platform is 30 minutes. And so it's a micro course membership. Um, it's free to the end user and it's region specific. So we've launched the Canadian one in beta. Um, America and Australia will be coming next. And the region specific component of it is another area where we see like a, a bit of a hole in the field. I mean, there is a lot of content for the states already out there, but especially in Canada and Australia, there's not as much region specific content. And in the states, you know, there can be a lot more. And that's what we want to hone in on, you know, especially things like labor mobility. We get a lot of questions on um, legislation, um, registration, associations. Like yeah. yeah. So that's the whole idea. And so you log into this membership and in the back end, you see all these micro courses and you take them and, it, and it's, you know, very to the point instead of these long drawn out hour long um, yeah. slide shows. So a lot of them are going to be 15 minutes, just sort of a quick, quick course. You, you still have a quiz, you get your CEUs, but you can take one at lunch. Um, and then the ones that apply to all regions will be available on every platform. And the ones on, you know, billing in Saskatchewan will only be in the Canadian version. Yeah. So let me make sure I understand the portion where you said that you're actually mailing out your camera equipment and you're, you're kind of like crowdsourcing um the yeah. the modules right um walk me through that how's how is this going to work let's say that i'm a candidate to film something on pacific audiology group's behalf or yeah. i'm i'm going to participant are. on that end how does so, this get, we should get you signed up right now <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah so you're on podcasting dave wants to do a podcasting course we're actually going to build one on because one of the holes we see is um clinics aren't doing enough with good video like most clinics a lot are but most aren't doing anything with with good video content for to market themselves for educational stuff for their clients and so we're going to build a course on really how easy that can be yeah uh, the kit but let's say you want to do it on podcasting and we say this is a good idea we're we're getting some questions on it there's a bit of a need um we would have you script something so let's say it's a 15 minute micro course it's the equivalent of writing like a really long blog like a 2000, 2000. yeah and you would you would script your course because with all the knowledge that's in your head you'd say here's how you do a podcast bing bang boom 2000 words we'd send you the kit which of course you don't need because you're already doing <laughs> recording but we would send it to you anyway with instructions on how to set it up you'd send a couple of test shots um and you record it on this on on an ipad where it captures all the video it's it syncs right away to our cloud, and we could then put in the intro, the graphics, um, do the editing, do the sound, and get it online pretty quickly. Yeah. So it's like an iPad, a mic, a light, and some instructions for the self film kit, right? And so yeah. And so how how many of the modules do you envision being sourced this way? We hope like most of them because I don't know, you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> I can't write all these courses. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this is like actually really fascinating and I think it's a brilliant idea. Um, you know, like 
I had no idea that uh, that's what this was. And, and, you know, for me, like this resonates a lot because one of the things I noticed, um, not to make this about myself, but I'll just use a personal anecdote yep. to illustrate this because I think it's a, it's kind of an interesting like macro theme, which is, um, so this is future year. This is the podcast I started, but then I also have the show this week in hearing and, um, I kind of co-created it and the large part of the idea was that there are a lot of people out there that might not really be, uh, for whatever reason, like have the bandwidth or be well suited to have their own full blown podcast, but they would totally be a candidate for like one, two, three episodes, something like that. So it was kind of trying to build a platform and do all the heavy lifting that is very much uh, sort of like a detractor for doing this. So yes. the, the pre-publishing, the post-publishing, like all of the heavy lifting, just you, all you need to do is shoot it and basically impart your knowledge uh, more or less because that platform layer was, it, it's a really big detractor in the podcasting space. It seems really daunting. And I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that aren't participating that could be eligible if you just make it more palatable or you give them a platform to kind of partake in this. So it's super interesting, in my opinion, to hear that you're kind of doing the same thing where you're saying you would be a great candidate to contribute, but you don't have the equipment, you don't have the wherewithal to design it to be of the caliber of the Pacific Audiology Group. So what we'll do is we'll enable you to do that. And I think that that will, that's going to like, bring a lot of people that are on the sidelines into the fold that, again, I think yeah. is part of a bigger trend that's really exciting. Yeah, we you're, have sort of, uh, we're democratizing it a little bit, right? So you're, because we could send this kid out. There's people all over the globe with lots of interesting ideas and things to teach um, and no one's ever going to hear from them or maybe someone locally does. And so we're hoping to bring all of that online um, we'll pay us sort of stipends because we're, we're giving this stuff away to, to really increase access. And then we may look at, you know, having an Oak tree commercial, or you'd have some advertising on there, but, uh, we don't want to charge people on the other end for this. Um, and so there's a way to make it work. And there's a lot of people, I think that are going to come out of the woodwork once we start to announce this, which is like, it's just happening kind of right now. We're also... We're also like announcing it as we go. Like, I, you know, I think that Chris and I are both like the way that we like to do business is is similar, which is another reason why we're a good fit. But like we've we've got four or five courses, you know, launched in the Canadian version of this and we've just launched it in beta and we're just like and all of those are most of those are actually global. So like you could anyone could sign up and take like, you know, it's health literacy, informed consent block scheduling, which is such an amazing thing, changed my entire life in the clinic. Block scheduling in 15 minutes and we just jump right into it. Um, but uh, you know, we're we've put it out there because we want feedback. Like we want to, we have this vision of what we want to create and we're okay um talking to people about it and being honest. Uh, you know, like we're we're figuring out the revenue model for it still. We really do not want, we we envision this being free to the end user and that's how we want to make it work. If we have to charge a premium, have a premium version um, or something like that that's paid, then of course we have to. But our goal is to create this wonderful micro course community where all of these people can contribute and, you know, products that you often don't think of, like little unique products that you can say, oh, we'll send you a film kit. Talk about it. Like, tell mm -hmm. people about it. We want hearing care professionals to log in and go, oh, I didn't know what that was. I really want to learn on that topic. I really want to hear about that. And they're not just hearing. There's nothing wrong with hearing from the big manufacturers. You need to hear from them. They're a big part of your job. Mm -hmm. We just don't want you to exclusively hear from them. We want you to hear about whatever it is that you want to hear about, but see all your options. Yeah, and like, I think going uh, a couple things, like one what you mentioned earlier about like the regional differences. So you could have people that you're soliciting these uh, contributions that are like, here's here's how this is all done in India. Here's how this is done in whichever part of the world you want to pick from. So, I, I mean, I think that, again, it goes to that point of like, you can take um, these topics that aren't really universal, that are variable, and you can you can kind of like have the variations of all of those. And the other thing is, like, I just think this is, you know, I, I'm 
going to put the hat on of somebody that is like a, a contributor and is doing a lot of personal branding. You know, this is kind of, I think, part and parcel with the way in which that's all moving, which is, of course, the sort of the old school way was like you develop your identity and then you go on the speaking circuit and you're speaking live at events. You know, that was kind of the trajectory of what that career and personal development looked like. And now a lot of it's done online. And I think that one of the biggest barriers is like the actual content production piece. And so I think that this whole idea of sending them the equipment and giving them a really clear outline of like, here's how you use it all. We're actually going to like preload the script so that it's on the teleprompter. So you just have to read it and make it super easy for them again to like take that knowledge and then produce something with it. There's, I think a lot of, there's a lot of untapped supply there when you make this really easily readily available for people that again is kind of an extension of what personal brand building has always been this is just like the new iteration of it is like making people's content more conducive to the digital age well and having someone like this was a huge barrier for us when we started is like course contributors are busy people who have really interesting things to say are busy people and so you know saying write a write an hour-long course on this well, it sounds a lot better when you say, can you just write a 2000 word blog on the most important to the point thing that you want to, that you need to say, and then we'll send you a kit and you read that blog out loud in front of the camera. And that is so much easier to digest. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, Hey, I have something to say, <laughs> give us a, give us an email. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And um, we have heard from a lot of people that way, which is really cool. Like the relationships you form from someone reaching out on LinkedIn, which is sort of our main um, platform because we are like business to business. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are on LinkedIn, you know, follow us. And um, that is where we've, you know, made a lot of neat connections, which is such a cool world to just mm -hmm. have that opportunity and that ability to, you know, meet people and say, hey, like, tell me about what you do. I want to tell you about what I do. Right. And again, I think that it's, uh, you know, one of the things I've just really come to learn from doing this podcast is uh, we were kind of joking about it at the beginning, Chris and I, before we started recording was like, you know, um, one of the sort of inherent fears of podcasting is, am I going to run out of things to talk about? And what, even in a small little niche industry like this, what you kind of tend to find is that that's not really the fear um, or that doesn't materialize in, in the way that you think it will um, because what happens is you tend to just find a lot of really interesting people. And yeah. and what I've come to learn is like there's so many people in this industry that have some very, very interesting things to say. And what is lacking, in my opinion, are um, these modern platforms more or less that allow yeah. for them to do what they've already always done, but do so in a way that's kind of built for the internet. Yeah. And I remember we had this fear at the beginning, Chris, when, cause we spent like a good few months, like every day with this membership on our mind, we knew we wanted to do something for continuing ed. We knew we loved the idea of micro courses. We knew we loved region specific. It seems so easy when I say it now to be like, oh, yeah, they're launching this product and that's what it is. But to get to that, you know, it's months of dialogue. And we were always like, well, how many topics will we have? Like, what if we launch this and we run out of topics? So we sat down one day with our computers and started typing out what yeah. we thought good micro courses would be like, OK, well, if we can come up with 10 of these really easily, then maybe it's a good idea. And within 15 minutes, we had like 100 micro courses. 100. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. And then we looked at each other and we were like, all right, I guess, I guess we, you know, this is great. And then we started talking about, and this is something like that is really apparent on fitness platforms. So if you're on a yoga platform or anything, you see this all the time. Peloton has owned the market for this, but the stackable. So you take a, a company or a person who says, I want to talk about auditory rehab, or I want to talk about yep. um, why ABRs are important. And you can do, you know, three or four different courses that can be stacked in different ways if people just want the intro in this one product or this or that. And I just love that topic because time is what people don't have anymore. People are doing more with less time and catering to that in education is just going to be really neat. Yeah, I couldn't agree. I mean, couldn't agree more. Um, with Peloton, you mean like basically you get the, you do like the bike and then you get like a 
you should do this stretching exercise right after it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's genius. I mean, like having your content. And again, I think this speaks to what would be so appealing, like from the creator's perspective is that, um, you know, A, you're, you're going to be exposing your, your expertise and your knowledge to just that many more people. Um, but I think that it's being able to have a mechanism on the back end that is kind of giving the audience related content and making it really easy for them to find the kinds of things that are most applicable to them. And so I think like if you have this, all of these different tags on there, so you have, this is a Canadian creator, or this is a guy that's in the UK, um, you know, obviously that's going to be more relevant for that audience. So it's just giving you more ability to filter it for all the different types of people that might want to consume that. Totally. And, and like, and we don't even know, right? Like we want to hear from people what they want to know. We, we got the most interesting inquiry the other day that said that, you know, people in this, in one of the states in the U S want to know the protocol that ABRs are doing in Ontario. There's something about that protocol that people want to know. And you're like, oh, cool. Like, I, I didn't know people wanted to know that. We can help make that connection. That's, yeah. I mean, it's interesting that you use that specific example because, like, this is something that um, I find, again, like, there's just so much variability. So you take newborn screenings, for example. Um, clearly, there's some sort of governing body or there's uh, an influential body that's, in some states, having... Um, enough of a, I guess, enough of a voice to say that we should do ABR uh, as the default for newborn screenings in other states is the OAE. And then if you have a refer, then you do the ABR. But it's like, why are some of states gravitating toward that? And so if you could have content that's that granular, I think it's yeah. super fascinating because I'm sure there's it's like one of those things that's like um, it's a sidebar conversation that, you know, yeah that are these kinds of conversations are going on like all the time behind the scenes with within every type of piece of the of the industry and of all the facets of audiology so if you can start to cater to that um yeah it might be a niche little pocket that you're appealing to but those niches are so hungry for more information that's like highly relevant to them totally and the uh i guess the medium is just changing right as you as you're aware, it's podcasting and video, and we're trying to get things, you know, built efficiently and quickly that are not, you know, just not the recorded slideshow. I think the recorded slideshow is like, I don't know what you'd compare it to, like a silent, almost like it's just people get tired of digesting them. We do as well. And so yeah. uh, it's important to find a way to make it like captivating, even if it's only 15 or 30 minutes, it still has to grab someone's attention. So they want to do one more. And 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 again, not to be totally redundant, but if I'm a creator, the challenge isn't I have something really interesting and and I can um, create you know some sort of content for that. It's how do I create something that's of the caliber that you all are doing, and and that's the democratization piece that I think people would find really interesting. Because let's face it, audiologists are way too busy to learn how to produce content that's that high quality. So like that's kind of the gap in the market is that the production side of it, I think, is where mm -hmm. people would really appreciate having a really high end set of equipment sent to them with detailed instructions of how do you turn this whole thing and bring it to life? That's a really innovative aspect of this that I, I think is so cool that you guys are doing. And when they press stop, it just goes through the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> really outer space comes to me fun. and I can drag it in and I can say it looks great or it, like awesome. you know it, it's the technology blows me away it's just wild it's been quite a journey just learning so much about um tech to do what we do you know it's, right. it's pretty pretty fun but it's not something that you learned overnight right like this has been the this has been the story of your company is how do you yeah. how do you as an audiologist like yes you're married to someone that's in in the film industry so you have that luxury i guess yeah. but you still had to sort of learn from scratch of how do you make that uh how do you make like this whole regime of content um that you know could be brought to life like how do you actually do that and you, so you know build a website build a mailing list learn how it all works like 
fortunately, I used to do a lot of editing for my husband, like the selects editing when he would go on a film shoot. So looking at, you know, an editing software wasn't completely foreign. Um, but there's a lot of skill sets mm-hmm. I use to bring this audiology message forward that um, took, you know, years to foster and and a lot of YouTube videos, and a lot of, <laughs> you know, so it's, um, yeah, Chris got a, and I don't know if they'll cut this part out of the podcast or not, but Chris got a, uh, somebody had t- said to him who was looking for a career change, just said, yeah, maybe we'll do like what you guys were thinking in a different field. But like, we're thinking of doing online education, you know, the video thing, it seems fun. We can pop up a website, we can sell courses. And Chris was saying that like a friend of a friend was doing this and his friend was telling him and he goes, Okay, hey, give me 30 minutes. I'll call him and try to talk him out of it. Like he has no idea how hard it is. Like, right. <laughs> like it must, yeah. Must I could talk about him in 30 minutes. photographer and has like two years to learn like four new careers. <laughs> but oh, yeah. we love it. Like we're not going anywhere. We, I absolutely, this is, um, this is an unexpected place to land from thinking that I want it to work in a university and a very great place to land. And it's, just, you know, I think it's just the beginning for us. Yeah, I mean, again, like I'll go off of the, uh, I've probably had over the last year, five to seven different conversations that are somewhat in this vein, which is um, whether it was, you know, with uh, Joe and Nicole or just some other people that I've had on where it's like, how do you, how do we kind of like uh, bring audiology into the, um, into the modern age from a, from a content standpoint where because again, a lot of this stuff actually already exists, but it's antiquated in the old, in the old modality. So a lot of it's like in person, and 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 we've discussed throughout this whole conversation of why that's so limiting. Um, and I just think that this is part of a, a larger trend that's uh, the the audiologist I think is really being empowered in a way through easier to use tools more accessible technology, um, social media, whatever it might be, where the one audiologist can have such a larger outsized impact now than I think ever before. Because in the past, it was like you were really just limited to however much exposure you could drum up more or less in person, maybe through, you know, the uh, the academic uh, avenue through the, you know, having a textbook or something like that. Um, but I think that this is so exciting is that you're just seeing what is already a really small um, workforce of professionals. I just think that like in order for all audiology to remain, to be relevant into the future, it's going to have to really lean into more of these kinds of things where one person, like if you in the past were just teaching at one university, you could have made a really positive impact with all of those students, but that's probably about where it would end. And now it's like you can create a whole platform where you bring these creators into the fold. You're mm-hmm. producing really high quality content. That's different than anything we've ever really had mm-hmm. everywhere, but like obviously applicable to this industry. Yeah, that's I, that's that. the dream. Yeah, that's uh, the dream. <laughs> it's funny how, uh, I mean, there's sort of a, there's a, there's a likeness between what we're doing and I didn't realize it till we sort of chatted before, before recording, and then with this Lord on thing, it's uh, you know our goal with that is to is to eventually try and produce and post produce one episode per week. Of course, it's a course, but yeah. like it's very uh, it's funny. It's kind of similar because mm-hmm. again, there's so much conversation, there's so much change happening. And yeah, I think that what's probably pretty frustrating is people having the sense of like, I feel like we're just so siloed. I wish that we could broaden the conversation. So that's definitely happening, I would imagine. Um, so as we kind of come to the close here, this has been a fascinating conversation. I um, want to just kind of get a sense of like, how do people, A, how can they engage with you two um, if they want to pursue the learn on stuff or if they're just interested in Pacific audiologies like bread and butter, premium content, all that. Like, where where would you recommend people start um, and and go about learning more about? Yeah, I guess the I mean the the website has everything there. Uh, PacificAudiologyGroup.com. You can browse, you know, like the suburban management training and all that stuff that's available a la carte. You could also now sign up for well, let's learn on Canada today because we're still building out uh, the other one. So it's all on the website. 
And if people have questions or want to contribute or, you know, any inquiries about whatever it is, group training, what's the next course, uh, info at pacificaudiologygroup.com. And, uh, and then LinkedIn, we're always on LinkedIn. My wife always jokes because I'm not on social media anymore, except for LinkedIn. <laughs> if I take a photo, she says, are you going to, are you going to post that on your LinkedIn? Like a photo of a, <laughs> you know, a cat or whatever. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a prolific LinkedIner. So fun. Yeah, Chris, it, yeah. LinkedIn is our, is our social, our, you know, we have, we have, we do have a Facebook page, but LinkedIn is where we really have our, our social presence. Yeah, I know LinkedIn sort of gets um, disparaged a little bit, but, uh, you know, for, from a B2B standpoint, you can't beat it. And uh, it's it's a great way, I think, for the industry to communicate. So I'm a big LinkedIn fan as well. Uh, I think it I think it's a great place for everybody to kind of connect and, and it's great to publish content as well. So, Amy, Chris, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, definitely going to be interested to stay in touch and, and hear more about the, uh, the evolution of Pacific Audiology Group, whether you rebrand it or not, um, with Learn On. Uh, but just can't thank you too enough for coming on today and, and sharing about the business you've built and, and where you're taking it. Thanks, Dave. Thanks so Likewise, much. Likewise, we're big fans of the uh, you and the show. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank and thanks for everybody who tuned in here to the end. We will chat with you next time. Cheers.